Hi everybody, Mark here, still talking about the American Revolution. So today I want to talk about one of the players, major player in this whole thing, uh, a gentleman by the name of John Adams. We've talked about John Adams a little bit before, but he was uh, an interesting person. Uh, he was a passionate person. He wanted freedom for the colonies. Uh, there was no question in his mind, and he fought very hard to uh, convince the other members of the Continental Congress that freedom was the way to go. Uh, John Adams was born um, in Braintree, Massachusetts, part of Quincy, uh, and uh, his father was a farmer and a clergyman. And uh, it was thought that John, being the, the eldest, would follow in his footsteps. But he didn't have the passion for the clergy, uh, but he loved to talk and he loved to uh, pontificate. And so um, early on he decided, and early on is very early, we're talking 10, 11, 12 years old, because he went to, to Harvard at 16. Um, as did most people at that age. And so um, he convinced his father, he loved, uh, he loved the, the conversations back and forth. His father was in, in the brain, uh, brain tree politics and the conversations back and forth and the negotiations and because the clergy kind of solved all the problems of the area. And he just loved that. He had that passion for it. So. Uh, convinced his father that he wanted to go to Harvard to be a lawyer. His father was very supporting of it. In fact, sold part of the ta uh, family farm uh, to pay for John to go to Harvard. And then he went off and John went off and, and uh, was a teacher in Worcester and, and a couple other places. Returned to Braintree, uh, fell in love with a young lady by the name of Abigail and we're gonna talk about her probably tomorrow. And these two, uh, they wrote volumes and volumes of letters to each other. And uh, they had such passionate terms. She would write every letter, my dearest friend. And he had just all kinds of, of lovely names for her. And they just, they were, uh, they were made for each other. They were just simply, made for each other. They were a wonderful, wonderful couple, uh, and um, uh, she was a good balance to him. Now, we know that he was a very prosperous lawyer in Boston, uh, and then he, he defended the uh, Lieutenant Prescott at the Boston Ma the, of the Boston Massacre fame and lost a lot of his clients because a lot of his clients were uh, uh, patriots, as was he, but they couldn't understand that his passion was, we must show England that we are a civilized nation over here. And that's why he wanted a fair trial. And so that's why he, he defended them. Uh, and it, it, hurt his, it hurt his business. 1774, he got involved in, in the politics of Boston. And in 1774 was a, selected to go to the first Continental Congress. Uh, again selected to go to the Second Continental Congress in 1775 and uh, stayed there until uh, like 1789, 1780, 1779, I'm sorry, when he was sent to uh, Europe uh, to uh, negotiate with France to borrow money from the Netherlands. Uh, and he spent a great deal of time away from his family. Uh, Abigail raised the family. John was not around. And uh, so she finally went to uh, live with him in Paris for a while. And then they thought they were going to go home. And the Continental Congress sent him to England um, to be the first ambassador. He was instrumental in the negotiating of the Treaty of Paris in 1783, um, which ended the American Revolutionary War. And so um, he was the first ambassador uh, in, uh, to England. They hated England. It was a dreary country. 
and all he longed for was to return to the farm. Uh, now, a little history about the farm is that he had a house right next to his father's house in uh, Braintree and a small little cabin. And then while they were in England, uh, Abigail bought a house um, in Braintree that she had, had visited as a child, found out that it was for sale. And they, they uh, moved there when they returned. Uh, she had it completely remodeled and, and, and redone. And it was later uh, inhabited by their son, John Quincy Adams. Um, all three of these homes you can visit. They're National Park in Braintree, Massachusetts. Uh, the lovely bride and I have been uh, fortunate to visit here. Um, and just marvelous, marvelous uh, places. Uh, they're all within uh, a very short distance of, of each other. Two of them are right next to each other, uh, the first two. And so uh, I encourage you to, um, to go visit them if you're ever in the Boston area. It's a short 15 minute ride from downtown Boston to Braintree and the National Park Service has done a wonderful job. So John returns, uh, Abigail returns uh, to Braintree and lo and behold, what happens, but uh, he's asked to be the Vice President of the United States under George Washington. And um, so he, he does, and he is elected Vice President, um, and then he thinks he's all done, and then it doesn't look like there's anybody around that, that's going to uh, run for President, because they don't know what to do. They all thought Washington would stay forever, and he didn't. So in uh, 1796, he runs and is elected as president. And he's the first president to live in, in the White House in Washington, D.C. Uh, you have to remember that the, the uh, White House was in Philadelphia at this time. So he gets to, to be the first to live in the current White House that we know. Seven, or 1800, um, he... Uh, runs for re-election, but he runs against his very, very good friend, Thomas Jefferson. And um, Adams and Jefferson were on uh, separate spectrums of the political uh, realm, and they, they would have these engaging dialogues for hours on end, back and forth, the pros and the cons, and, and, and they did this for years, for years, and they would do it in letters. And all this time, they, um, they would do this back and forth, and it was great mental stimulation for both of them. In the election of 1800, Thomas Jefferson takes the negative side and starts criticizing his friend and, and demeaning his friend John Adams. John Adams loses the presidency and returns to uh, his farm, which he has dubbed Peacefield. I have dubbed my lovely estate Peacefield because it's such a wonderful place. And he lives there until his death in um, 1826. And uh, Abigail pre, uh, predeceases him. I think she dies in 1816. Uh, but it's, it's, there's still solid love going on. Uh, he's devastated when she passes away. He doesn't know what to do. Um, and he just, and in the last few years, he uh, rejuvenates um, his friendship with Thomas Jefferson. He has to write a letter to Jefferson and say, Abigail's died. And uh, that kind of starts the whole ball, ball uh, rolling. So John Adams passes away. Get this, you ready for this? July the 4th, the day of independence, 1826. Thomas Jefferson, another independence person, dies on July the 4th, 1826. Two friends die on the same day, July the 4th. So there's two great things out that I want to pass on. This book on John Adams by David McCullum and the video, John Adams, fabulous video if you don't want to read this this tomb of, of a book uh, based on the book the video is based on the book 
Uh, both of them are fabulous. I highly recommend them. And I want to close with a, a quote from John Adams. And he says, but what do we mean by the American Revolution? Do we mean the American War? The revolution was effected before the war co uh, commenced. The revolution was in the minds and the hearts of the people. Have a great night.